Okay. Thank you, everybody. And I'm, well, this is a full house. I love it. Um, so when you see this dystopian picture, what do you think about? Just any, just shout it out. What? iRobot. I, That's one thought. Is this threatening? It's threatening, isn't it? This was actually generated by AI because I said, create a picture of a dystopian society being overrun by AI. And this is what it came up with. You see people on the ground, uh, cars going in all directions, uh, and of course, the spaceships and stuff like that. Uh, so what are some concerns you have about AI? Any concerns about it? Just over reliance on it. That's a yeah. That's that is yes. That's a that's a good that's a good one. Any others? Well, it's good to think about that. Did anyone go to the other AI presentation about the security? So I I wish I'd, I I was I was actually at another one, so I, I missed that one. I wanted to because I this could have been a point counterpoint kind of discussion. So this is actually pro AI. So I'll talk about that today. So my name is Mark Cooksey. Um, you can see. Uh, my email address there, mcooksy6 at gmail.com. Um, I'm the ISO 1345 quality leader for uh, Norton Healthcare. Uh, we're the largest regional hospital network in, in the Louisville area. And if I sound funny, it's because that's how you say Louisville. So I tell people, imagine yourself with a bunch of marbles in your mouth with sw swilling your bourbon and, and saying Louisville. So that's how we say it there. Um, yeah, so we're the first that I know of uh, in-house provider of uh, services for medical equipment that's ISO certified. And part of the reason we went down this journey with AI was out of necessity. And I'll talk about that story in a minute. Okay, today we're gonna talk about, yeah, it is here, ready or not, um, what it is and, and why it's needed, why we ended up using it a lot, but not over relying on it. I really like your, your comment there. Uh, give you some tips on how to use AI effectively. Uh, and then uh, I wanna give you several examples that you might take back to your organization. So the first was, um, as part of our ISO certification process, we had what are called non-conformances or NCs. And we had an auditor that was very inexperienced and I, we were in this endless loop where we weren't connecting and I wasn't able to get the corrective actions uh, presented to her satisfaction. So I went to AI and, and found some, some solutions that she was looking for. Uh, I found uh, doing risk assessment is a, is a great uh, application for AI. Uh, quality management system, quality management system documentation is, is really getting more intense now that we're ISO certified. And I wanna give you some examples of how we've used this to simplify our documentation. Uh, and then how many people have had to create a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation? Okay, how, many, how much time, just throw it, how much time does it take to create one average? How many days, hours? Hours, hours, yeah. Well, so uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's legit. Depending on the length of it, creating the outline and, and then cutting and pasting. So I'll show you some uh, an amazing uh, AI application. I think I've, I've given this presentation before, and that was the one thing that went took back with them. Said I want to start doing this. It's pretty cool. And then we'll close out with some just for fun things. Ready? Okay. Okay. How many have used AI? I just want to get a ga gauge for that. So. Wow, two thirds, that's that's great, that's great. Some successes, yeah, okay, great. Actually, uh, you've got my email address, so if you have some success stories, send them my way, I'd like to know how you're using it. Okay, so those of us that are uh, boomers or boomers on the edge, will know who this is. Rosie, right? The rest of you have no clue. No, this is actually, uh, I grew up, I thought we'd be in, in, uh, in jet powered cars, going through space, and this is Rosie, the, the maid, I guess, for the Jetsons, okay? So this helped me because at first when I was using AI, I was like, I need to make this personalized. So I think of talking to Rosie. And so Rosie for me has been my creative collaborator, uh, helps me brainstorm ideas. Sometimes I just can't get past the writer's block. So AI is great at generating lots of ideas. Uh, it can refine some, some details. Um, proofreader, I have very poor write, written skills, my, just ask my wife. Um, it, it fills in the blanks. I'll have incomplete thoughts and it, it finishes the thought. I think what you meant to say was this, it's very polite. Um, helps me uh, simplify and consolidate my documentations. And then uh, I've used it more and more as my problem solver and coder. How many people have done coding? VB coding, anybody? Wow, that's the minority I was looking for. I am not, but thanks to AI, I'll, I'll say, hey, I'm looking for the, the website code for this, and it generates it. 
and, and it works. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so I've used it to create uh, BB code, HTML code, uh, and actually use the code to generate a, automatically a presentation, which is the, the thing I'm going to share with you at the end. Um, yeah, yeah, so st stay awake. <laughs> okay, so those are some of the ways generally that I've used it. So again, create a collaborator, proofreader, and problem solver and coder. Uh, I'm also an ISO certified, uh, uh, excuse me, Six Sigma uh, certified master black belt instructor. And uh, for doing statistical analysis, it, it generates the, it shows the math. Uh, and I've just been amazed at its, its ability to grasp that very quickly. Okay, can you all connect this with four straight lines? You've all seen this, this exercise before? It's not as easy as you think. It's kind of like the Cracker Barrel thing where you're trying to leave, leave with one uh, toothpick or no, it's a, it's a golf tee. Um, well, there's two ways to do this, to solve this. So we're using computers. So the normal way is to go to Google and notice that you search commercial websites, then you have to read the documentation and probably have to endure a commercial, right? It's, it's a commercial site. Then you have to see if it actually solves your problem. And then and if it doesn't, then you keep looking at other sites. You go down the list, right? Uh, now with AI, this is Copilot signal, uh, symbol, by the way, uh, it generates a solution. It references the websites. It's got links baked in. If you're interested, you can actually see it. Uh, it checks for you to see if it works, and then it revises the solution as needed. So the hint for this solution is you have to go outside the box. Okay, you want to see the solution? Of course you do. So just write three by three, and then you go. So here's the answer. So you have to go up and out, and then down and out, over, and you get it with four straight lines. So the point of this is that AI can help us think outside the box a little bit. Okay, uh, our challenge at Norton Healthcare is we have two ISO certifications. So at the corporate level, we have, we're 9001 certified, and uh, we've been on that journey now for about four years. Uh, we, we'd started the journey back in 2021-ish, uh, and these are the clauses. So uh, my mission in life is to make sure that people understand this. This is not that complicated, but there are four clauses, the quality control, management responsibility, human resources, how you run your shop, and then where my background kind of aligns very well with this is, is how do you factor in continuous improvement, quality improvement? So on, so when we went down this journey, it, it created a lot more documentation that didn't exist before. We had legacy documentation for policies and procedures, work instructions, but then we added a whole another layer on top of that. And if that wasn't bad enough, complexity-wise, uh, then at the corporate level, we have to be we're part of Norton, so they're 9001 certified. So the net result of that is just a lot of documentation. So our first challenge, I'll, I'll create, these are challenges. So that's why I like to think about AI as kind of like a, a coworker that you said, hey, I've got this problem, how would you solve it? So the first one was uh, closing out non-conformances. And uh, non-conformance is not a bad thing. In fact, if they, if you get audited and they find nothing, then something's wrong, right? So we expected to find something and they did, and so they, they say here's, uh, and they were all minor non-conformances, minor things, so it wasn't like they wanted to shut us down, but they said, we're gonna have to issue what's called a, a corrective action plan or cap. And the way it worked was, is the cap approved? No, redo the cap. So we were stuck in this endless cycle with this particular auditor, and I, I was getting nowhere with this person. In fact, when I challenged her, I would say, she would say, well, I need to check with my manager, <laughs> which didn't give me a lot of confidence. So then I went, well, I don't know what to do about this, because we're it's just, very frustrating, so I went, I know what, let's see um, AI might help us out. So this is what she was telling me. She says, you have uh, failed to do the following. Complete the cap form correctly, okay, because they had their own form. Uh, demonstrate that you understand ISO standards, uh, that you identify the root causes of those non-conformances or NCs, that you define short and long-term solutions. She actually wanted a certain format. What are your short-term solutions and what are your long-term solutions? And then how do you, how can I, see how they the, how those solutions actually correct the non-conformance and, and address the root causes so i was like okay um help help ai so i think um for those of you who use it uh, or haven't used it just start simply first of all give it some context give it some background information or perspective so what i did in this particular case was i said okay you are the auditor and you found these non-conformances and i uploaded the non-conformances help me generate a corrective action plan with short and long-term solutions and potential root causes, okay? 
So uh, that was a that was an excellent way to prompt it because I was really frustrated with the whole thing. You have to be specific and, and clearly define what you want it to do, um, and then set expectations. You know, narrower the better. If you if you want to solve world peace, you're going to it'll say I can't do that, or something illegal. They won't do that either. Um, evaluate the output and compare your results with your your own knowledge. So. One of the things about AI, AI is um, you have to know what you're doing. I mean, I wouldn't trust it for anything because, not to say it that way, you have to know what you, you know. You have to know what your expectations are and know if it's a legitimate outcome. Okay, uh, dialogue with it and say, I was looking more for this or scratch that, and it very quickly makes the adjustments for you. And so again, here's the out, the content here. So I said, you are the auditor. See the attached nonconformance for context. And it confirms, I got it, I'll work on it. What do you want? And then it says, what do you want to do? Um, well, you're conducting the recertification of Norton Healthcare, and I need some help. And it says, thank you, and uh, you're on your way. So you set expectations. So I said, let's make sure the CAT corrective action plan meets ISO requirements. And so it, it says, okay, now, now you've given me some more information here. I, I think I know what you're talking about. And, and oh, can you also generate a letter to the auditor? Because I, I have a, my written skills were poor, and I would often write too much information, and I could tell it was ag aggravating her. So it, it took this content and said, "Dear Iris, I should have, I should have." <laughs> that's not her name, uh, but anyway, it said, "Here's, here's what we're doing. Here's the root causes, the corrective actions, and so forth." And it seemed to work. Uh, it was really nice uh, to have that confirmation. I said, "This looks pretty good." I took the cap and made a few corrections for clarity. How does this look? And so what I like about Rosie is, is she does that. She'll say, okay, I, and it's always very positive. She'll say, not too bad, but I added these corrections. What do you think? So it's, you're almost having a real dialogue with a, with a coworker that doesn't have a chip on their shoulder. So I kind of like that. Okay, so AI strengths, what it does well. Um, it can decipher meaning. Um, I'm just, like I was in a presentation recently about, um, uh, on it was, it was a, a doing an MRI, I'll talk about that in a minute, how to, how to create the procedure. And I just typed that out, I generated a whole procedure right then and there, it was very accurate. So it can de decipher meaning. What I, it has access to this ex huge expanse of information, websites and other information as well. And the thing I like most about it, it can take an outline and make a book, or it can take a book and make an outline. So it, it works both ways. It could take an incredible amount of information and distill it down for your boss or whomever, or if you just have a few ideas, you're not sure where to go with it, it'll, it'll fill in the blanks for you. So it does a nice job with that. Okay, any questions about that first challenge? We're still working with it. Uh, that was a good, my first foray into AI and, and, and I'm, it gave me some confidence to try some new things. So one of the other parts about uh, ISO 1345 is risk assessment. And so this was challenge number two. And the challenge was this, this is what I call risky business, not, not Tom Cruise, but this is just risk. After the COVID restrictions, lifted, our, our beds were at full capacity. We couldn't do the PM on them. Anyone have that problem? 2022-ish, yeah. Um, so uh, the, we were denied access to the beds. Uh, and then we measure PM completions on time and it tanked, obviously, because we couldn't get our hands on it. Um, so I in, in, used AI to evaluate the risk of changing from an OEM to an AEM scheduled PM. So what are the risks of changing your PM? I'm gonna switch sides for a minute because my neck's getting sore. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so I, I said, here's the here's the situation. I want you to generate. Sorry about the graphics here; it's kind of blurry. But um, does everyone know what a risk prioritization number is? RPN? Yeah. So that's so I said, here here's the situation. We have a diversity care bed, and we want to change our to our, our schedule from OEM to an AEM. Help me understand all the risks of all the subsystems. So it not it went out and grabbed the uh, the OEM. PM schedule for me, and I click on it, and I said, yeah, that's the right one, and then it starts going through by each system and evaluating what kind of risks occur if failure was to occur, okay? So, so these are some samples of it. So side rail latching mechanisms that list the failure, that you, as you can see there, and it puts a severity number. So I used a one through five, okay, for severity, and the, the caster braking, you see, it, it could impact patient safety and mobility, maybe cause falls, those kinds of things. So it lists the kinds of things that could happen and it gives a severity score. Um, electrical system, you know, much much higher severity, obviously, because it's electrical system, talks about uh, danger to patients 
or caregivers. So I thought they did an excellent job of summarizing for me. Oh, I hadn't thought about the caregivers because they could get shocked or get injured as well, right? Um, so then I said, okay, that's that's wonderful. So this is a complete list it gave me. I said, can you put that in a table for me? And then I said, okay, you, these are severity scores. Now, can you also um, put an assessment of one to five about the the uh, ability to detect a failure? And since the bed's used all day, you know, when you when you go to operate the bed, if it doesn't operate, you know it because it's, you don't need a, an X-ray to know it's failed, right? So the detection for most of these issues are very easy. And the frequency, it kind of gave some estimates of the on a one one to five scale. And so with RPN, you multiply those together. And the nice thing about this exercise is um, the, R, the total RPN score was relatively low. The risk was low by making these changes because even though the severity is high, the ability to, de to detect the problem is, is very good and the frequency of occurrence is very low. So that's why we were felt a little bit more emboldened to make this, this uh, change to, from an, a PM schedule to an AEM schedule. Okay, questions about that? Good application of AI, you think? Okay, challenge number three. So this is the big one um, for our documentation system. So this is the Arch in St. Louis. Everyone been there? Okay, did y'all watch the video how it, was, how it was built? So I watched the video many years ago and it's curious because they started on both sides and met in the middle, all right? And that's kind of how our documentation, you don't need to read all this stuff, but on the legacy side of CE, we had 70 SOPs and even more documents, lots of documentation. Uh, actually, it's 350 pages. I, for demonstration purposes, I, I put a stack of them for my boss. And so that's what we have today, just with our old legacy procedures. And then we're going to add on top of that another 200 pages for ISO. And then, oh, by the way, we also have the corporate, of, and I think I estimate about 1,000 pages, everything from how you turn in an expense report to um, Gosh, everything, you know, all the corporate stuff, right? So that's a real challenge for us. And my goal was these these two types of documentations really weren't meshed well together, and we were holding our technicians accountable. Hey, you have to know about all this stuff, and it was driving them crazy because it's like, how am I supposed to know 350 pages worth of information, stuff that I may see once in my lifetime, right? Or how am I supposed to get my head around all this ISO stuff? Uh, I just need to, I just want to fix the devices. I don't need to be knowing about all this other stuff. Oh, and by the way, you're still responsible as an ISO employee or a Norton uh, healthcare employee, all the other policies and procedures, which you sign off on every year. So I went to AI and said, help me simplify our procedures. And it went through that process uh, pretty quickly, uh, created for me an outline. So I just kept dumping hundreds of pages and said, can you simplify this and make an outline for me? So that's what it's doing here. And I, um, I was quite impressed. This is just one segment of the uh, SOPs, the, the legacy uh, SOPs that we had. So we had 111 or so individual SOPs, and we were able to consolidate us, you know, using AI. And I would say, what's, a, what's an easier way to say this? And it would shrink it down and say, this seems to be applicable. And I said, is it ISO 1345, you know, proof? And they said, yes, it looks like it meets that requirement as well. So I was able to to knock that down significantly, down to around uh, 15 or so um, SOPs, because a lot of them were redundant. They kept cross-referencing each other, okay? Uh, so now we have a completed arch. <laughs> There's not the gaps that we had before. And we're gonna keep, uh, keep going. I'll give you another example. So uh, ISO 9001 is what Norton Healthcare Corporate is, is held to, and their quality manual was 14 pages. Ours was written by a consultant, and uh, it's 55 pages. It's way overkill, right? And so I've gone through and said, is this still applicable to an in-house service provider? And it would say, actually, not, not applicable. You can simplify it by, by this language. So that's what we're working on. Um, so this is the other thing I thought was pretty interesting. This is what I was talking about a minute ago. I said, let's search for uh, an example. So let's take something that's fairly complicated, an MRI repair, just create for me the procedure for that. And it started to make that documentation. Now, I've never done this, so I don't. I would want someone, a subject matter expert, to work with me and verify this. But it at least gives you a starting point, right? Uh, and then I said, well, let's take that policy and convert that into a procedure, step by step. So it it thinks, okay, well, preparation, gather your tools, make sure you follow the safety protocols, and then you do the initial inspection. 
I was kind of like, well, how does it know that's pretty? So, you know, visual check, make sure there's nothing that's obvious that you need to be aware of, do an environmental check. Maybe you want to put screens up if you're, if you're doing the, the repair uh, so you, you don't get injured during that process. So that's going from proceed from policy to procedure. See where I'm going here? So what's the next step? So you go from procedure, what's the next step now? Check, that here checklist? Yes. Did you see this presentation already? No, but this is exactly where you want to go because this is what your techs are looking for. You know, they don't want to weed through a policy. They certainly, they might look at the procedure if they need to, but you as the manager or me as the auditor, I just want a simple way of going, okay, show me how you do the preparation. Then there's your tools. I just say, yep, yep, you're doing that. This is also a great tool to give feedback. If there's something, if you're getting your, your um, components returned or your repairs returned, you can find out where, the, you know, where it's breaking down, right? So again, we've gone from um, policy to procedure to checklist. So that's a great way of using it. I really have, have found this to be an excellent uh, application. Okay, for those of that raised their hand earlier about making these PowerPoint presentation, it's death by PowerPoint. It's death to create it. It's also death to endure it sometimes. But let's talk about how we can simplify that process using AI. Okay, so uh, that's me. <laughs> I said, help me generate a an outline. Uh, I want to give a presentation on AI. So it spits out this, you know, this long. And I, and I also gave it some context. So it needs to be 25 minutes and. Um, I think that's all I gave it. So it, it's, it gave me a pretty good outline. And I was at first going to cut and paste it. And I thought, I don't have time for that. So, so I did a little research. And you can give it some prompt to generate code. So I, I said, well, OK, uh, help me generate the code to automatically create the, the PowerPoint of this outline. OK? So for the few of us that are actually VB coders, you'll be geeked out about this. This is pretty cool. So what it does is it generates this, which I don't even know what it means. But if you cut and paste or copy that in the upper right corner, it says copy code. So I copy the code, then I go over to um, the PowerPoint. Oh, before it does that, it says, oh, by the way, here's the instructions. So if you're new, it lists the steps. So those of you that like step, it does that for you. Okay, so I actually follow the steps. The first time I did it, it didn't work. And it says, did you follow the steps? <laughs> so so <laughs> it has a sense of humor. Yeah, don't say it. <laughs> Come on, Rosie. Don't do that to me. Um, so this is a screenshot of it. So this is the area of PowerPoint that this is the deep end of the pool. So it's a, you see where it says developer. So you click developer, and then um, then you say Visual Basic, and then that pops up this screen, which again I, is, is new to me. And then you uh, you go to insert module, and you paste that all that gobbledygook there. And then the fun part happens when you either hit that little green uh, triangle. Or you can just hit run. I think you can do it either way works. And cross your fingers and hope that it says it creates it. And by God, it did. It's just like absolutely amazing. Okay. Now sometimes you get uh, an error, and then you you it'll tell you where it didn't work, and you cut and paste that back into AI, and it'll say, oh, I missed something. That's happened before. So it's it's there's a pretty good job of debugging. And sometimes after the if it's third try, it's still not working. I, I just sort of try again. But this worked out pretty well. So these are actually generated by AI. Um, it made a title slide for me, just like that. Now I put the graphics in there, obviously, but it, this is, it gave me an introduction and some bullet points. It said maybe an overview of AI, uh, you know, understanding quality management systems and ISO 1345 might be a good thing to, to tie it together because I gave it some context. I wanted to make sure this is all about tying into quality systems. So it created that uh, uh, language for me, some challenges. Um, and I said, this looks great. I like, I like to give AI some, you know, positive feedback, even though I don't think it really cares. Um, but um, I'm curious, how long would have this have taken me if I did this uh, by hand? Because this is really what this is productivity for, for if you're a manager or anybody that wants to save some time on creation. And it, and it went through, it says, it gave me all the detailed steps to create a PowerPoint presentation, right? So you have to draft it, then you have to create the PowerPoint. And I was like, so it does the math. This is what the crazy, I didn't ask for this. That's, it just says, okay, it takes about, what does it say here? Yeah, five hours on average versus 15 minutes. Five hours was, was what you all were saying, right? Right right there in the range. So, and it, and it also calculates, for those that don't know how to do percent reductions, you know, it says manual minus AI over manual times 100. 
and it tells you 95%. That's a pretty significant improvement, right? So then I want to take it a step further because I was presenting on this topic today. I said, hey, can you create, whoops, I'm sorry. Can you create an, uh, a, a bar graph? So this is not Mark Hooksy, this is, this is Rosie. This makes a nice little graphic here and gives some, some context for you. And it says, hey, it's a 95% reduction. So this is pretty cool. And I, again, I'm just dabbling in it. And while I'm thinking about it, for those, for those of you that have used AI, have you, who's used chat GPT? Just kind of curious. Oh, wow, most. How many have used uh, the Copilot? Okay, not so many. Well, uh, I love chat GPT. I, I instantly grasped it. It seems to have a good relationship with me. But uh, we had a cyber event a year and a half ago. So Norton has locked down lots of the uh, external applications, websites, chat GPT. So I get this big, you're violating corporate policy, you know, whatever. <laughs> so they blocked me out. So I started using Copilot out of necessity since it's a Microsoft product. Um, it's okay. I, I still like chat. I saw my phone. I use the app on my phone sometimes. But those are two big ones that I'm aware of. They, they, they keep coming up more and more platforms. And all, all I would suggest is just try them out. And if it works for you, keep, keep using it. Um, the other thing about AI that I've, that I've encountered is um, I have a son who's very black and white. And he's very smart. And he, and he gets the idea, but it's hard for it to, to get that idea out of his head. Do you, know, you know people like that? So uh, his twin sister is the opposite. She's always, hey, she's, it's all, hey, let's try this. So AI has that problem sometimes. Sometimes you get to the end of the wall, at, you know, end of it, and you just you flip over to the other AI application, right? And see if they, and sometimes they get a different answer, maybe a better answer. So it's like having a second opinion. Okay, challenge number five. How are we doing on time? Do I have listed this? We've got half an hour. Look at that. That's productivity. Do I need to slow down? You all want to talk a little bit about some stuff, or is this okay? I'm really excited about it, as you can tell, and I have a second cup of coffee, so maybe that's part of it, too. So I apologize for that. Um, so let's have, just for fun, AI for fun. And you're going to do this. So I said, hey, let's create a Marvel-like superhero that repairs MRI scanners. And it comes back with, okay, sure, let's call, call this person ScanGuard. And I'm like, and, and he even gives an alias. Its real name is Dr. Alex Carter. So this is like, oh, this is fun. Hope my boss doesn't see this. So uh, it also creates the, the backstory. You know, every Marvel superhero is always an accident, right? And it gives them a superpower. And then it, and it names its superpowers. I like this one, that it, can, it has the ability to manipulate data, right? And it has electromagnetic pulse. It can, it can repair the devices by emitting EMPs. Um, and then uh, it has a costume. Every superhero has to have a costume, right? Uh, so it generates this based up, it takes the knowledge of what it thinks about MRIs and says it's going to be uh, sleek and metallic with glowing blue lines that mimic the look of an MRI scanner. And it's equipped with various medical tools and gadgets, which I thought was pretty funny. It even has a mission. Oh, there he is right there. So that was AI generated. That's what, that's what you were thinking, right? The cat, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So it's got the, it has a mission. Sorry for the, the graphics being a little goofy here. It says the catchphrase is, Let's get to the heart of the matter. Yeah, let's get to the heart of the matter. I love it. So that's the having some fun with it. So the benefits of AI and HTM. Um, it can help you develop new skills. As I said, uh, not being a VB coder. Uh, it's also been really good about uh, macro creations for Excel. Um, I made a macro that generates process maps automatically and puts the arrow lines because part of my work is uh, creating process maps and Usually it's very time consuming, but if you have a list of your process steps, this macro takes the process steps and creates uh, an individual block with the, you know, the action and the arrows. And if it's a decision tree, it creates it a triangle. It's just amazing. If you want to copy that, I can send it to you. Uh, so that's new skills. I think it improves accuracy. Uh, certainly for a written word, it's very good at catching common mistakes, graphical, you know, your grammatical errors and that kind of thing. And as, as evidenced by our presentation today, increase efficiency, I think. Uh, and that can lead to some better decision making and ultimately productivity and cost savings. Um, I think the real thing I didn't put on this list here for, for my world is sim simplifying things. Being able to take the documentation deluge and breaking it down into smaller and smaller components so that your, your staff will actually read it, okay? Um, some challenges, data privacy concerns. So the other presentation this morning, I think talked a little bit about that. Um, I think, I don't know which one of the AI uh, platforms 
but you can it, it assumes that you want it to keep everything you've ever written um, and you can actually turn that off so it ha doesn't have memory and those so there's some challenges there um, I worked for GE for almost 20 years and what they told us when email was the big thing is says don't put anything in email that you don't want you know read on in a, in a court so I still think that way so if it's something you don't want your significant other or your boss don't put that into a just a cautionary tale there you can get to a little too personal you get a little too comfortable if you're not, if you're not careful um, integrating with existing systems may be challenged so it is kind of a what I call a swivel chair application you're doing your work over here and you go over to AI so it's you know I don't think they've integrated that yet but I'm sure folks are trying to figure that out um, AI is no replacement for human experience so there's just it learns fast it, it it goes out, it, it's only based on the knowledge that's out there on the web. So, you know, that, I don't, that's the challenge, that's a limitation. And sometimes training and skill requirements may be, may be a, uh, something to consider with, with AI. All right, so this is another AI generator. I like this one really good, because it's, you know, it's kind of what I envision, but AI is not perfect. Look at the, it's, look how you spelled ScanGuard, SanGuard, right? And the other thing, and I've tried to make uh, multiple images with AI and I'll say now it's a medical, it, it repairs medical equipment. And for some reason, it either puts a lab coat on them and it always puts the little <laughs> the stethoscope around their neck. And I'll say, take the stethoscope. And for some reason, it, it just, it can't take that away. I think you don't use stethoscopes in your practice, do you? In your repair? I don't think you do. At least I've not seen it. But it's, and it put a little checklist. I like the, as a quality leader, I, I like to see the little checklist there. So I put that. Um, so anyway, that's another, another version, a little bit more, you know, comic book uh, type. And it's got the mask, you know, we're, we're sort of somewhat uh, superheroes with masks, got to have that. And he's got, I like the, he's got the high fashion goatee too, the, the, the stubble, right? <laughs> so in closing here, AI is here, we know that. Uh, hopefully you got some ideas of what it can do, uh, why it's needed. You can live without it, but uh, it can certainly be a nice, like I said, it's a nice coworker, ally, second opinion, whatever, you know, whatever collaborator, if you want to call it that. Uh, and hopefully these AI tips, you can take back some of them. Uh, again, the most important thing is give it context. You can, AI is really good about, if you want to say, now, um, write this procedure for as, as someone who's never been an HTM, brand new employee. So it, it can actually do that for you. Really like that. Or you can say, hey, you're the auditor. What are you looking for? So you can, you can give it different kind of perspectives if you will. And I hope the examples were, were helpful, um, kind of gave you the full gamut of the big things that we've been using to, uh, to improve our documentation and our processes and kind of some shortcut tips too. Uh, so I'm kind of open this to any Q&A. Again, this is relatively new. I'm going to say within the last six months I've been dabbling with this. So uh, just, just tip, dip your toe in the water, give it a try. Uh, you might be surprised how it works out. Any questions? Comments? Yes, sir. Uh, 